Righto, it's Helioda Chance, and yes, indeed, this is the shootout between the MacBook Pro 16 and the XPS 17, my most requested video, and they're both at maximum brightness here. Which screen looks better? Yes, I know, this one does look better. We'll get into why it does look better in a sec. Now, first of all, I'm not saying it's a better display than this. This is the best display on a laptop, but let's see which one's better out of these two, which one makes more sense for you. So here's the deal. A lot of people think the MacBook Pro slam dunk, it's gonna win, it's the best laptop going around. And yeah, I understand that point of view, but it's not that cut and dry. Let's get into it. So this comes with the Intel 11th generation, eight core, 11800H, 45 watt CPU, and a six gigabyte RTX 3060. This is the M1 Max MacBook Pro 64 gigs RAM and the 32 core GPU. Now this XPS does have 32 gigs RAM and that's one thing I want to point out. You can upgrade the M.2 SSD in this so you can actually put two M.2 drives in there and you can upgrade the RAM as well. Now it is 32 gigs versus 64. None of the tests I do on these will the 32 gig be a bottleneck so don't worry about that these are both similar power packs so there you have the macbook pro power pack on the right the white one and on the left the xps so 130 watts on the xps 140 watts on the macbook pro one thing that's great about the dell is it's usb c 130 watts this uses magsafe now you can power it through the usb type c's or thunderbolt but you won't get full power what i mean by that it'll perform the same but you won't get over 100 watts fast charge and etc but getting back to these bricks there's virtually no difference in the size yes the mac one looks smaller but it is thicker and wider so they're probably about the same sort of size and weight now when it comes to weight this is 90 millimeters thick this is 16.8 millimeters thick yeah you wouldn't know that would you because yes this looks thinner on the side the xps but its underbelly is thicker this one definitely looks chunkier and thicker now when it comes to weight 2.21 kilos versus 2.15 kilos so basically 4.9 pounds versus 4.7 pounds can you notice yeah a little bit but have a look at the display that is 17 inch versus 16.2 now you can notice that this pops more etc but in terms of size they look very similar even though there's quite a bit of size difference i guess that extra little bit of real estate you get with that bar up there when the notch is and by the way no notch here and it does have a camera that makes that display look bigger than it actually is one thing the xps infinity edge not much of a chin there you do have a bit of a chin with the mac now i want to spend a bit of time on the display because these are maximum brightness okay this is a 500 nit display. It's a 4K plus display. So that's 3840 by 2040. This is 120 hertz liquid retina XDR. So this is proper HDR. 1600 nits peak brightness and 1000 nits sustained brightness. Now, don't be misled by that because that is only if you have this thing in HDR mode or you're viewing HDR. Now, if you have a look at these two displays here, this one does pop. This is an IPS panel. It's not mini LED. That is mini LED. Now, I cannot see that those blacks are deeper than this. Like, seriously, they look pretty much exactly the same. But this looks more colorful and this looks like it pops more. Now, this is in SD mode, so it's locked to around 500 nits. It's a little bit over 500 nits, but near enough. This one is around 520 nits. But why does it pop so much more than this? Now, I've gone through all the display modes on this. I've locked in different refresh rates, etc., and there's no way I can make this look like this, like pop like this. This looks more like OLED. And to my eye and a lot of people's eye, it looks better than this, even though they're both in SD mode here. Now, let me tell you, that changes once I view HDR content. I'll show you that in a sec. And it's not just this. I've compared this to other laptops and a lot of people say, oh, the Windows laptop looks better because in SD mode, you don't get the full potential out of this display. And a lot of the Windows laptops I've seen in SD mode look better than this. But you might say, well, this looks oversaturated etc but this display here the saturation comes straight back once you have it in hdr mode but i would like to point out most of the time you're going to be in sd mode these windows displays most of the time look better it's not better than this this is the best display in the laptop 120 hertz 1600 nits peak brightness it is amazing but it is amazing in hdr mode and sd mode well Look for yourself, all right? See there? Dolby Vision. Yes, Teleho Tech grades in Dolby Vision. And by the way, if you have a HDR display, make sure you look at this in HDR because then you'll see the real difference. Now, this is in SD mode, but when you play a video, it should go to HD mode. The genius about the Mac is it can actually have just a HDR window on an SD background. You'll see what I mean. Okay, now you can see the difference straight away, right? This is HDR, this is not HDR. Let's just turn down the volume and play this. And yes, this is maximum brightness. 
now you can see the difference between SD and HDR right I'll just pause that a little bit yeah that is the difference now this is playing this in sort of SD mode if I try to play this in HDR it just blows it out because it's not really a HDR display and now you can see the difference right so let's turn this into HDR mode so I'll turn it on to HDR mode now it's flickering see you don't have to do this with Mac OS now it's in HDR mode let's play that same video again so this is in HDR mode and you'll see Dolby Vision of course I grade in Dolby Vision but um if we have a look where are we going here you can see it just blows it out because it just doesn't understand now there will be some applications that may play this back properly but there you can see it is blown out and yeah it doesn't look good in HDR mode compared to this I mean it's night and day difference and you saw it in SD mode before so yeah this display is better but how much time are you going to spend in SD mode versus HDR mode and in SD mode I think you can see this one does pop more etc all right so let's have a look at some performance between these two laptops and as you can see here we have Cinebench single core and yes the Mac is a little bit faster on the single core there but is it a big deal here not really it's actually quite surprising that they're pretty much the same sort of performance although you do have to know of course the M1 Pro uses a lot less power around that sort of 30 watts of power compared to the Intel which can use you know over double that now let's get into Cinebench multi-core and as you can see they're again very comparable the scores now the XPS 17 is somewhat thermally constrained with this same 11800H I can get 15,000 on other laptops like gaming laptops that you can unlock it and you can pump a whole lot more power into it and I'm talking about in excess of 100 watts of power again the same thing applies the Mac is a little bit faster and uses much less power it's going to be really interesting when older Lake laptops come out but these laptops are so close in performance so now let's get into some real world stuff even though Cinebench is real world that's how long the render would take in Cinebench but let's get into Lightroom and this is sort of like a big surprise to me the Mac is quite a lot faster now you might think well 16 seconds faster big deal but I mean that scales okay this uses pretty much the CPU 100% it is 75 raw nefs exported to JPEG one thing to note too is the Mac does all this stuff sort of silent right whereas the XPS once it's under full load you will hear the fans although it's not gaming laptop loud you will hear the fans so again there you can see win to the Mac let's get into blender here and as you can see the M1 Max is faster than the XPS 17 with 11800H I will say again with this same CPU in another laptop like a gaming laptop I can get faster renders by comparing these two laptops surprisingly the Mac is faster now this is the latest blender for both of them and this is using the CPU now there is a new version of blender where it uses the GPU on the Mac but it's still in alpha stage I'll wait until it's like a stable version Version and then we'll compare like the GPU render but certainly in the CPU render the Mac is still faster than the XPS 17 in Blender now let's talk about Premiere Pro exporting one of my projects that I've sort of used on every single laptop that comes in here and wolf wow this blew me away this is pretty much faster than a 3080 laptop now this Mac so this is the latest version of Adobe Premiere it wasn't like that on the version before I can tell you right now but 128 is actually faster than a 3080 laptop which can do it in the sort of 140 range the XPS 17 2 minutes 39 very respectable I mean this is a project that's you know 5 minutes long and I guess being a minute faster that again will scale right you got a 10 minute project it's going to be two minutes faster or just over two minutes and then you know etc etc now when it comes to gaming we use tomb raider built-in benchmark same settings by 1200 and we know the 32 core macbook pro 16 will push 93 frames at these settings the xps 17 with a 3060 can do 72 frames so when you get you know line of saying oh it's like a 3060 no the 32 core gpu in the m1 max in the 16 inch is clearly faster than a 3060 and I think it is definitely comparable to a 3080 sort of that 100 watt range when you consider that nothing is optimized for the Mac in this benchmark right and when it comes to battery life between the two well the MacBook Pro 16 wins here again double the battery life if you're just doing web surfing and stuff like that you're going to get 14 hours on the macbook pro 16 you're going to get around that sort of seven hours with the xps now it does have a higher resolution display but there is a big difference for just normal use 
at standby and resume time is much better on the Mac as well. But it may surprise you that if you slam the GPU on both of them or push them to their limits, the MacBook Pro 16 can use over 100 watts on the battery. And pretty much it comes down to battery capacity. 97 watt hours versus 99 watt hours. And both of them on battery can use the same amount of power. The Mac will use over 100 watts. The XPS actually probably won't use over 100 watts, especially under sustained loads because it will throttle down a bit right so the battery life is actually very comparable when you're actually pushing both the machines and it's pretty much the same with a slight edge to the mac and that may surprise you when it comes down to it for content creation if you're using stuff that is optimized for apple i would say there's a win here for the mac for general use you got that battery life too but if you are someone that is actually into gaming as well the xps is the choice because the gaming experience on the mac is not great not because it can't game it would be an awesome gaming machine but it just doesn't have the gaming support okay so there's only one choice if you're going to be gaming a lot unless you want to do cloud gaming which is an option of course yeah, so anyway i'll catch you in the next one guys tally ho